Welcome folks. Okay, here's a video on the most famous Bigfoot Sasquatch of them all, Patty. And yeah, what can you say that hasn't been said before? Yeah. Let's get into this video on, on Patty, the Patterson Gimlin filmed Sasquatch at Bluff Creek, California in 1967. Okay, here we go. Patty, a female Bigfoot caught on film by Roger Patterson and Robert Gimlin in 1967 near Bluff Creek, California. Nicknamed by Dimitri Bayanov after cameraman Roger Patterson. Physical description. Height estimates range from six feet two inches was Gimlin's estimate to seven, seven feet four inches, Patterson's estimate. Based on the size of the tracks found, a chest width has been estimated at 22 inches with a depth of 16 inches. Weight estimates based on the film range from 280 to 2,030 pounds. But if the chest measurements are accurate, the weight would be roughly 540 pounds. Massive upper body, covered with short, shiny black hair. Head set low below shoulders, sagittal crest, usually a male primate characteristic, bare, greyish skin on parts of the face, heavy brow ridge, deep set eyes, wide nose, short neck, prominent hair covered breasts, soles of feet are bare and light in colour. Behaviour, a human like gait with arms swinging, foul odour, tracks, 10 prints of both feet, 14.5 inches long by 6 inches wide, were found in the creek bed, stride 40 to 42 inches. Location, Bluff Creek, just north of its confluence with Notice Creek in the Six Rivers National Forest, southeastern Del Norte County, California. Significant sighting, around 1.20 p.m. on October 20th, 1967, Retired rodeo rider and horse breeder Roger Patterson and his friend Robert Gimlin were riding along Bluff Creek in Northern California looking for Bigfoot tracks. As they rode around a bend, they saw a female crouching by the creek. Their horses reared up and Patterson's pony fell on its side. He scrambled clear and managed to pull his least 16mm Cine Kodak K100 home movie camera out of, of the saddlebag. Gimlin covered the animals with his 30, 30 by 6 rifle in case they tried to attack. The creature watched them briefly before it walked away at a deliberate pace, place, pace across the sandbar. Meanwhile, Patterson ran after it and started filming, though he lost his ballast, ballast, balance once he crossed the creek. This portion of the film turned out blurred and jerky, and he neglected to note the film speed. When he... When he got a clear view, he stopped running and held the camera steady. At the same time, the Bigfoot turned its upper body sideways briefly to look at him, then moved off into the brush. Patterson kept filming for a while, though trees were in the way. After running out of film, he reloaded. Then the men both tried following the tracks, but lost the trail about 150 feet beyond the film site. Patterson took some footage of the tracks along the creek, but this has apparently been lost. Forester Lyle Lafferty took photos of the tracks the following day after a rainstorm and taxidermist Bob Titmus visited the site on October 29th and made 10 plaster casts of both right and left footprints. He was able to follow the trail and found some body impressions indicating that after the incident. Paddy had sat down in some ferns about 125 to 150 yards away, perhaps watching the men. Present status. The film consists of more than 23 feet of colour footage, which is 952 frames. The primary stumbling block is that the film speed of the camera was not noted at the time. The codec was adjustable to run at variable speeds. Patterson normally shot at 24 frames per second, but sometimes, sometime after the incident he noted the camera was set on 18. This may have been Patterson's misreading of 16. FPS since there is apparently no setting for 18 on the K100 model. 
In any case, the adjustment may have occurred accidentally when he pulled the camera out of the saddlebag. Biomechanics expert Donald W. Grieve pointed out in December 1971 that the creature, that the, that the creature's observable muscular movements are seemingly natural and would be difficult to fake, especially with the breadth of its shoulders. He said even a large human could probably not match the gait if the film speed was 16 or 18 frames per second. In October 1972, Russian researchers Dmitry Bayanov and Igor Burtsev correlated the bounces in the film with the steps taken by Patterson, concluding that the film speed must have been 16 frames per second, or Patterson would have been sprinting along at an unlikely speed. Opinion is strongly divided on whether Patty looks plausibly real or is an improbable mix of human and ape characteristics. In 1973, primatologist John Napier wrote that Although he could not see the zipper, the creature didn't make sense to him because its upper body is ape-like and its legs and gait are human-like. He also pointed out Patty's odd blend of both male crest and female breast primate features. In 1975, Peter Byrne noted that the time, Friday, and location of the sightings make a hoax improbable. In 1967, the rough road since collapsed near the creek was a popular Route for weekend campers and Bigfoot hunters. A hoax party could be could be too easily surprised by a pickup coming down the road, and the specific spot has open visibility from the south, north, and west. The noise of the creek itself would make the, would mask the sounds made by unexpected hunters or hikers. A man in a Bigfoot suit would be taking unnecessary risks by exposing himself to trigger happy backpackers eager to bag the big prize. There are many sites further upstream that offer a more convenient setting for hoax preparations, footprints and the event itself. Anthropologist Grover Kranz observed in 1992 that sagittal crests and apes are a function of size, not gender, and exist to anchor the massive jaws of the larger males. Kranz also concluded that the sequence had been filmed at 18 frames per second based on his estimate of the speed of the stride as measured by the swinging of the arms and the legs and determined that it correlated with the reported height of 6 to 7 feet. At 24 frames per second, the subject would have been less than 4 feet tall. At 16 frames per second, it would have been well over 7 feet. In 1999, he found out that the settings on the K100 model were only approximate, within 10% of the setting, according to Kodak. A camera set to 16 frames per second was electronically timed at 19 frames per second, or 3 frames faster. The allegation that Patterson was a permanently employed as a cameraman for American National Enterprises in Salt Lake City and commissioned to create a Bigfoot film is, at best, unsubstantiated. The charge was made at the Fox TV special entitled World's Greatest Hoaxes, Secrets Finally Revealed, which aired on December 28, 1998. Cliff Crook and Cliff, Mur Cliff Murphy claimed to be able to see a metal latch on the torso, while Eric Beckford says he has found a metal tube on Paddy's arm. Neither of these objects have been identified by other analysis. So there you go, folks. That's some, that's some uh, new information. Nice, nice information on uh, the Patterson Gimlin film. Some of it that I've never read before. And uh, they just... Uh, I'm not going to read you all possible explanations because... I believe 100% it's real. And as they conclude here, the last one, if genuine, the film is one of the best pieces of evidence for the existence of a large unknown hominid in North America. Yes, most certainly. Patty, they exist, folks. They're out there. And uh, it's not something to be scoffed about. And if you're a person who happens to just come about this video by chance, they exist. Hundreds and thousands of stories of people's accounts. So there you go, folks. Hope you like this one. And I'll catch you next time.